Today we'll be reviewing the third grade art docent lesson called Winter Woods. This art docent lesson is based on two things. First, part of the third grade curriculum is to talk about weather and climate. And so this um, lesson talks about the snowy climate, which we don't see much of in our area, but um, is certainly found throughout the world. And it's also inspired by Robert Frost's poem, uh, Walking by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. So to begin the lesson, you'll welcome the kids. You'll have some sample artwork up. As the lead docent, you want to get there a minute or two early to hang up your sample work. Um, and then what you can do is have them close their eyes as you read Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening out loud to them by Robert Frost. And as they are listening, encourage them to try to envision the scene. So you'll start by having the kids um, take out their black and white sheets. The black is the background for everything. They can write their names on the back side in pencil before you start. That will save a lot of effort later. And then you'll have them tear two strips that don't take up any more than half of the paper lengthwise. So these are going to be um, snowdrifts that will form the front and base of your scene. So you tear. Kids might need some help tearing. Um, it can be a little bit tricky for them. Uh, so you can have your helpers or your, you yourself can wander around and help them get a little bit of variation. You don't want a straight line. This should not be cut or folded. You want it to have some variation the way snowdrifts wood. So to put those strips on the paper, you'll want to first lay them out and eyeball it before you glue. So you'll get your two strips, you'll put the straight one along the bottom, and then layer the second strip you've torn just behind it. Um, this will give you an idea of how the snowdrifts will look. And then you'll glue down that second one first onto the paper. So do you see I've got it where you wanted it. It's easier to glue that one first because it's in the background. Then you put glue on the first tear with a straight edge and layer it over the top. Now I'm making up for a little bit of a gap by gluing it slightly above the bottom of the paper. And that's a trick you can show the kids that if they start by gluing the first one a little too high they can make up for it by gluing their other one slightly above the very bottom, and then they can trim that off later. Once you have those glued down, you set this one aside, and you'll start to use this sheet of paper. And on this sheet of paper, you do all of the other shapes that come into play for the art project. Um, so tell them that they should keep it laid out um, horizontally. Uh, that way they won't get any trees that are going way too high off the edge of the paper. If they do it working horizontally, the trees will all fit onto their, to the final sheet of paper. Start off with something very easy, and that would be the bunny rabbit. The bunny rabbit is basically two circles or ovals, and then two almond shapes for the ears. So you'll have them start by doing a rabbit with that simple, almost snowman-like shape. Have them share those um, templates for the deer. It's a more complicated shape and um, it's harder to get a good looking deer. So we just have that template for them so they can have that sense of um, getting a look that they're probably more comfortable with. Um, there may be some ambitious kids who want to do one on their own um, and if they're insistent that's probably just fine. Most kids will want to do one on their own. They should do one perhaps two deer. We have mostly just one deer per scene. This, um, this little guy got ambitious and kind of copied the shape of the big deer to make a small one. Kids can do that, but I would tell them not to do antlers. Antlers um, get really complicated when it comes to cutting them out, and they should just skip the antlers. Uh, it'll save them and you some headache. So the next shape, after you've kind of done the deer template and the rabbit, that's pretty easy to do is this bare deciduous tree. And that, there are two, two different ways of doing it. Very simple ways of doing it. It's basically a stick figure. So you have them draw a line, 
and then a couple of branches coming off the line. Um, they don't have to add any width to it if they don't want. You can add that as you cut it out by cutting slightly to the right and slightly to the left of your lines and kind of centering your cuts on those lines. You can end up making it as wide as you want it to be uh, during the cutout stage. Um, if they want, they could make it have the width that it will finally have earlier on during the drawing stage, but it's up to them. This stick figures, stick figures are easy to work with, so I kind of recommend that. They may want to make one that's taller than the other. Um, most of these have some variation in size between them and two or three max. It's all got to fit onto this sheet of paper. So have them do their stick trees and those are super fast. Make sure they don't get hung up on um, details during the drawing stage. It's not necessary. Um, what, when they do the cutting out, they'll make changes anyway. The next thing they will draw is the evergreens. This is also pretty easy to do. There's a little trick. You just layer um, triangles. So you start by uh, doing your triangle on the top right here and then you do embedding within the first triangle another one and another one and another and however many you want to do a really tall tree <coughs> excuse me i have five triangles and even a long trunk at the bottom or you might have a short squat tree by layering triangles they'll end up with a look that um, looks kind of like your traditional childlike Christmas tree or evergreen tree um, because you won't see the lines. When you end up gluing these shapes onto the paper, you flip it over, you glue down the pencil side, and so you won't see any of this step, but it will allow them to get a, a tree that's an evergreen tree shape pretty quickly. Some kids might feel comfortable free-forming like this, the shape, but um, you tend to get a less... Um, symmetrical shape when you do it like that and that's okay trees aren't symmetrical um, but this stacking technique with the triangles is a really quick and easy way that works well for most kids of all different abilities so anyway have them do again two or three evergreen trees of different heights I've got all of my shapes now except for the moon the moon is a simple circle you can freehand that. Again, you're cutting it out so you can tweak it when you do, or if the kids want to trace it, there are all kinds of circular things around them in the classrooms. Now you've got all of your items that will be in the picture, and so now it's time to cut them out. The drawing portion should take 20 to 25, maybe 30 minutes. It, it will take them time. And there will be kids who get worried about um, the exactness of the evergreen shape or who will want to add more details. And I would just say remind them again and again that this doesn't need to look perfect, that silhouettes are really very simple when it comes right down to it. They don't have tons of details. That's the point of this art project. It's not that we're capturing every single detail. It's that we're capturing a simplistic scene. And the simplicity of the scene lends to that quiet winter feeling that we're trying to capture with the black and white. Rather than having them cut it out, um, cut out each object from this giant piece of paper, cut around the objects loosely. So there's my moon. Here's a tree. Cut around the objects loosely and then they'll be working with a much smaller sheet of paper as they actually cut it out. It'll be much more manageable for them. It's kind of hard to twist this giant sheet of paper around. So um, I would recommend that. Another thought for the lead docent is that you may not finish drawing everything you'd like to draw or cutting out everything that you've drawn or gluing everything onto your final project. When you're the lead docent, you want to give kids the tools to make their own art and some ideas for what finished products might look like but I've noticed that when you do a complete artwork, 
the kids art will look a lot like yours because they tend to want to copy the adult and so if you don't have time to finish that's okay um, it's probably better that you spend some of your time going from student to student helping uh, if they need help encouraging them to simplify if they need to simplify which is pretty common or um, or complimenting their work saying wow you know I like how you push yourself to come up with a little mini deer or huh that's a very unique branch on a tree I've seen trees like that when I've been out hiking um, and talk to them about their artwork that makes them feel really special and if you see something that is unique that you think the other kids might benefit from seeing then ask the little artist if you can hold it up and show it off to the peers and you can say hey you know I, I just want to point out um, how how detailed these trees are this student they really managed to get lots of um, lots of different shapes onto that bare tree without making it overly complicated um, and give them a moment at being famous and one thought on those trees uh, these bare trees, you know, out in nature can get pretty, pretty full of branches. Um, but we don't want to have the kids doing trees that have branches upon branches upon twigs coming off in every direction. Not only would that make it really hard to cut out, um, but it also would just be really busy. And this, this scene looks great, simple. Encourage the kids to cut out the little section it's in between the legs. And that's because on a black background, it will make a difference. It will, it will give it four separate legs instead of two back legs and one big solid front chunk. When the kids are trying to think about size, um, you want to remind them that if the, the deer template is the same for everybody. So if a deer is this big on the page, the rabbit should be smaller. My rabbit's pretty big. Maybe it's a jackrabbit and this is a young deer or something. But Remind them that they should be thinking about sizes. Um, the deer probably isn't going to be taller than the evergreen trees. Um, the twigs, maybe they're small twigs, maybe they're baby trees, but for the picture to be filled nicely, encourage them to use the deer as a guide. Trees should be taller by twice as tall, maybe three times, and rabbits should be shorter. Um, no taller than kind of the main body of the deer. And if they do that, they'll end up with a pretty good um, ratio of heights of the different objects. The, the other fun thing and good thing about these silhouette art projects is that you can kind of say, well, you know, this rabbit was, this deer was really close and this tree was really far. And so it's fine. Um, but it is nice to be able to give the kids some guidance on early on when they first start sketching um, so that they can end up with a finished product that that has some sizes that are closer to real life. Okay so once you've got everything cut out you'll have the kids pick up their original black construction paper with the snow drifts on it and just no glue involved have them lay out object and then once they've kind of placed everything then they get their glue and they get to glue everything down. And this is ready for the next um, two and final steps. So when you have your scene all glued down and you put your regular glue away, then the kids get to use the translucent glitter glue. And a few notes on that. These little lids should be pressed back with their fingers, otherwise they drag in the uh, across their own glitter lines and kind of mess with it. So the idea of using this translucent glue is that in a winter night with a full moon and no clouds, the moon will lend light to all the places where snow has settled. So the rabbit and the deer will not get any glitter glue because they're moving, they don't have snow settling on them. But the top edges of the trees of all those boughs will. So I'm going to do glue just along the top, not along every surface of the tree, but just along these top boughs on either side, I guess that's what you'd call it. Not on the trunk. Um, and then I'll do the same for the bare tree that's deciduous. 
and I'll go along the snow bank, the snow drift, and add a line right there. The final place that needs to have glitter glue added is the moon itself, and it's the thing that's shedding light on this scene, and so it gets to have glitter all the way around in a full circle because it's sharing its light everywhere. Then you just set it down, tell them to keep their hands off it so they aren't spreading stuff anywhere, and they get to do the very last step. This is where your cup and your tempera paint will come in. So you need almost no paint for this. So if you have a table of four kids, you'll give them a fourth a teaspoon worth. For myself, I just did the tiniest dot. Um, and then you'll take your old toothbrush and dip it in. So just the very tiny top is covered. And then you take your finger, this is the messy part, kids will have to wash their hands, and you drag your finger across it. And as you do this, it sprays these teeny tiny white dots all over the paper. And what it looks like is that fine crystal, um, the little crystal bits of ice that float around the night on a wintry night um, and would be shimmering on this full moon night in a quiet forest. It creates a beautifully tranquil scene with just little suggestions of um, life and movement, but mostly it's just a very quiet woods on a snowy evening, and that's your project. The cleanup is simple. Make sure all the glue lids are completely closed and paint completely closed so that we don't run out of those. Toss the cups. Gather the paint brushes, wash those off really well, get all the paint off of them so that they're flexible and um, not stiff and covered in stiff white dry paint. Remember to stick the, um, the little Bennett Valley sticker on the back that says this is a project sponsored by the Bennett Valley Education Foundation um, so that parents know that this is one of the cool projects that the foundation makes possible. Thank you very much for being our docents, and I hope you have a lot of fun with this lesson.